Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode three of the Red Light Hockey Podcast on YouTube. It's myself, Liam, joined by Mr. Paul P. Daddy. What's going on, Paul? How are you doing today? Pretty good. How about yourself? I am fantastic. Before we kick this off, I would like to re- remind all of our listeners to please continue the donations to the Red Light Hawk, sorry, to Hall Saving Border Collie Rescue, our good friends. They have, they do a bunch of charity work for Border Collies, um, and they're a great organization. We will leave the email in the description of this video for you to donate to. We appreciate that. They appreciate that, and it helps the dogs. The money does not go to anybody but the dogs to help dogs, and all you want to do is help the dogs. So, that being said, we're here to talk about NHL 21. We're here to play NHL 21 franchise mode. So, and that's what we're going to do. We are 47 games into the season. Uh, our record right now is 24-19-4. and four. We are sitting at 6th in the Central. Just a, We're tied for 5th for the wild card spot. But they, uh, the Minnesota Wild have more uh, regulation wins than we are. Sorry, wins than we do. We have just more overtime losses for the tie. So they are have, they're holding the wild card for now. That being said, let's have a look at our lives. Let's see what we can do to improve. Let's see what happens. So to recap, last game we finished off with playing the Detroit Red Wings and winning that game in overtime. And the game winner was scored by yours truly, Tyler Tifoli. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Top line, we have David Krejci, Tyler, Tyler Tifoli, and Jakob Verona. Second line is Zach Sanford, Eric Stahl, Oliver Bjorkstrand. Third line, we have Valerie Nachushkin, Alex Ayafalo, and Guryanov on the wing. Our fourth line is Lemieux, Zaka, and Achari on the fourth line. Our defense, we got Ekholm with Myers. Our second pairing is Israel Heward, our uh, first round pick in the entry draft. He went fifth overall. He is so far panning out pretty good. Uh, he's playing with Gooley right now. And we have Ian Cole paired with Ethan Bear. Um, Gooley right now is subbing in for our big defenseman, Dustin Bioflin, who is injured at this time. And in Nets, our goaltending pairing is Thatcher Demko and Aiden the Man Hill. Paul, do you have any comments on our lineup? Looking pretty good. Awesome. So far. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's an expansion team, you know, it's not it's not outstanding, but it's not terrible. Um, our power play has actually been very productive so far this season. They're both at a plus three. Our coaching staff has a very good power play scheme on the go. That's always helpful. It is. It is. Now we are we are in Indeed. a tough division. We are in the central, so it, it is what it is. Um, so yeah. That being said, I was thinking. I was thinking. I want to trade uh, David Krejci. Oh. Or Eric Stahl, one of the two. What's uh? Go back, go back to the lineups. Let's see that for a second. <laughs> Out of the two, probably Krejci. I, because I that agree second on that. second line is plus five. Yeah, no, I agree on that. And the reason why I want to trade him, I want to trade him for a bit of a younger centerman who can play that top line role still. You know. Not like I, I don't want to mortgage the future, but I also want to get a younger, a younger one center because we have two old centermen, right? So I kind of want to youngen or bring more youth to the lineup or middle age, what we're gonna call it. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we can target Montreal, uh, go for a Phil Deneau. Maybe. Or go to Edmonton. And, tar- and target Orion Nugent Hopkins. Maybe. Which one of those two would you rather target? Or do you have anybody else in mind? That's a, uh, that's a between like an 84 to an 87 overall in that range. 
Um, Who's under 30? Hmm. Let's, uh, let's go have a look at the run the league. Yeah, let's let's do that. I can't think of anybody off the top of my head, but Tree Spurs are on. Just slow it down there, buddy. Slow it down. Max Domi is also a possibility. Yeah, he could be. Uh, Rupe Hints. So I, I don't want to go for a guy who's going to cost us like, the future, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um. Hmm. Why is their sentiment so good? I like Adrian Kempe. I like him a lot. Whoa. Also, Kot Kinyem, you may have a low value, so. What is uh, Philip Deneau's uh, face off. Uh, 94. Is it really? Yeah, he's like one of the best face off men in the league. So. Let's see. Yeah. It's not scouted, but. Or 90, sorry. Huh. See, that's what I feel. If we're going to look for a center, I think we need somebody with a good face off uh, overall. That's why I wanted to go over and fill the note. Just, um, maybe we'll keep to knowing the maybe for now. He's an 84 overall, and like playing on the first line, he'll grow. He's not old, and you can sign him for cheap. Like, compared, like, there's not many other centers that are like him in the market. Ryan Strom, maybe? Oh. See, like, there's not many good face-off centermen in the league that are available. No, that's... There's really oh, there's not. And like, the I, ones that are top end players seem to not have a good face off overall. Exactly. Like I'm saying, like Phil Deneau is probably our best rounding centerman we can go for. Unless you want to go for a, a Shirelli. Eighty two. Kerfoot, 82. Who are you? I'm thinking that O's our best option right now. As much as I know you. 
What right. about like a Sean Monahan? How, what's his overall and his trade value? Is it high? He, or? Yeah, he's too expensive. I mean, we can try to go for Sean Monahan. Well, and we'd have to see how he'd fit into the system and everything. We don't have much scouting on him here. Let's uh, let's get our scout to go have a look at him. Let's uh, simulate a bit and come back. Come back to this and see. Also, I rather trade with the Eastern teams because it's easier, or not easier, but I don't want to give too much to a team in our own division. Yeah. So, wh what's your reasoning with not wanting uh, Deno on the team? There's none, it's just I was curious as to who else was available. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. We could also uh, trade Bufflin for somebody. Does he have any trade value, really? Or I mean, he he, he could probably get us Deno. Ooh. Do you want Brett Kulak? Uh. Check player info. He's a, he's a fast defenseman. I feel like he, he could be good in the right system, but I feel like we don't have spot for him to play, so. Yeah, we really don't. We Our defense is pretty decent. It's not decent, but like, no. Who we calling up? Who we calling up? For what position? Forward. Uh... Jordan Nolan. Because Jordan Nolan will most likely clear waivers. Go back down. Plus, it's fourth line roll, anyways, you need, so. Yeah, you don't, you don't want a skilled guy there. Oof, I almost went best lines there. That would have been bad. It drives me crazy when I accidentally do that. Now... Here's my big question. I think... Well, let's not go for... Let's, uh... the deadline and I say we kind of blow up the team at the deadline if we're not doing good and just get some more pieces for the future trade away one year what, one yeah. year contracts yeah N veterans and stuff <clears throat> fill up with the veterans that we do have in the AHL like a Jordan Nolan David Backus Ron Hainsey Exactly, exactly. Who do we uh, have all on one year deals? Like 30 people. Oh. Well then. That's good. 
like a lot of nobodies that we signed just to fill cap space. We have Jordan uh, Nolan on a one-year, six million dollar contract, something like that. Oh, okay. Let's see. Hainsey's on a one-year deal. I think this guy. I think. And Heed. Is he one year or two years? Two. Two. Uh, Jake Bean's on a one-year deal, but whatever. He's an RFA. What's going on with your dog, man? Uh, he's... He's trouble. David he's Backus puppy. is on a one-year deal. Sheehan's on a one-year deal. Uh, then we have Eric Stahl and Crazy on one-year deals. Each... Call up Calfoot. <clears throat> See what we can do in the NHL. Plus, with him, you can give him minutes if you want. Indeed. He's a two way, so he can play uh, power play, penalty kill, all the fun stuff. Ooh. Yeah, I'll put him there like that. No. Thanks for taking the spot, Cal. We really appreciate it. You know what? He's only a top six guy. He's not going to develop into anything better. Who, Philip Myers? Yeah. Could trade him. He's pro he probably has decent value. Or at least some. That's what I think I'm going to go do. Let's go see what we can get for him. I think Cal Foot just took his job. And the rebuild begins. Not a rebuild, I guess, the build, because we're a new team. Oh, yeah, we have 34 offers out for him. I like this one the most. So far, yeah, I'm probably going to go with that one. Ooh, a second round pick's nice too, though. Ooh, ooh. A low elite. Low elite or medium top six? Hey, why are you offering us Phil, Phil Pula? We don't want old men. That's, that could be a good one. Which one? The Edmonton offer. Scared there, I think I hit the wrong button by accident. Thought I almost just traded away that guy for nothing. Ryan, I think it's Ryan McLeod that they offered and a uh Ooh Paul Stastny, I like him. Yeah, McLeod, I don't know. I'm not a fan of his. This is Joey Anderson? Uh, no, that's a defenseman, so it's not Joey. No, it's another Joey Anderson. Oh, there's two of them? Yeah, and there's also like four Josh Andersons. McLeod's actually low top six, by the way. Yeah. I think the one from, uh, I think Kurashev is probably the best bet. Either Kurashev at second or Bach.
Personally, I'm thinking more towards the, the Bach. Oh yeah, look at that, top six. It's gonna develop real nice. Putting the HL on the top line. What do you think? Yeah, you could do that easily. My mother says okay. <laughs> yep. Oh, Gurianov did not like the trade. Nobody liked it. Well, that's why... why... I'm the GM. Oh, we'll send Bach down to the American Hockey League. Put him on, on the top line somewhere down there. On the top four, on the top six, sorry. And uh, see how that works out for him. There we go, you can play right there. With Chaplik and Jankowski. Our AHL team seems to be doing very well though. Are they? Yeah, the first place in the HL. Awesome. Yeah, you'd love to see it. You do indeed love to see it. Well, this sucks. The new, uh, the new prospects injured right away. Hey, speaking of old men, getting rid of getting rid of old men. Oh no, Hainsey. Do you, I mean, I kind of want to do it to give him a chance to go to a contender. It's yeah, basically just... <clears throat> is whose pick do you think is going to be better at the end of the day? Buffalo's or Florida? That's what the big trade basically is. Well, Florida, we get him in the, this year. And Buffalo, we have to wait two years to see it. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I think. Yeah, I kind of want to take that too. Plus, it's just good for the, it's good, it's, it's good for the morale, you know, it puts him on a winning team. For a guy who's played his entire career without making the playoffs. He won a cup. Did he? Who am I thinking yeah, of? Pittsburgh. Who am I thinking of that played his entire career without making the playoffs? Uh, Bogosian did. Uh, did Bogosian? I think Bogosian did until last year. So did, well, he did as well. Ron Hainsey did go his entire career without playing a playoff game until uh, he won the cup with Pittsburgh. Oh, maybe. Oh, yes. Oh, him. Where's the man? There he is. Our enforcer. He's a first round pick. <laughs> yep. Well, that pick didn't pan out very well. No, the, uh, if you look at the picks from that year and years around it, the top, the first round picks, they're kind of, uh, Hit, very hit and miss with unlike now. Well, I mean, there was Crosby. Well, yeah, but there was a <laughs> lot of good players, but the top picks, like the first round, it's easier to go through and find 
there's more hits from later rounds than there is from top the t uh, first round, probably. Yeah, I guess analytics weren't very big back then, too, eh? Yeah. I guess. It's also technology, scouting, scouting European players, scouting, getting your scouts everywhere to check more players. College draft picks are getting a lot better. Scouting of college is getting a lot better. I'm going to fire this coach at the end of the season. <clears throat> All okay. these guys... Please let me fire him. I've always wanted to fire somebody. Sure. <laughs> All he's done is complain. Oh, then he sounds like my kind of guy, then. Alright. Here we go. It's the trade deadline mini game feature. Let's, uh, let's do this. Which is a fun little feature that they added in. Some trade offers for the big bad Dustin Bufflin, uh, who's been hurt since the middle of the season with a broken I don't know what. So we got Buffalo with a second, a third, and Yuri Paterka. We got Chicago coming in with a second, a third, and Hagel. And then they also are again offering us Kurishev a third and a sixth. Uh, Josh Brook a fourth and a fifth. Ryan McLeod a third and a fourth. Raphael Lavoie, a fourth and a fifth. David Bieksa, a fourth and a fifth. Uh, Florida's offering us a second, a third, and Stillman. Uh, and then they're also offering us DPHO, a fourth and a fifth. Philly is offering us a second, a third, and LaVerge. Uh, Radcliffe is coming in from Philly for with two pairs of fours. McLennan is coming in with a fourth and a fifth. And Pittsburgh is offering up a offering up a second, a fourth, and a Trevor Nielsen. I think we go and make our own trade offer to Montreal for Philip Deneau. And then we move Krejci. And then we move Eric Stahl. And we give the captaincy to our young superstar defenseman. And he can be our captain for the future. Kind of like Crosby was. Do you have any debates to that? Oh. Uh, no, not really. No, I got nothing. <laughs> I think I think that's our best bet. Um, just simply because it's yeah, it is what it is. We're not we're not great, but we're not terrible. We're kind of on that bubble, and I think we need a younger centerman to center a top line because unless. Unless, unless, unless. Do they still have Cole Caulfield? Oh, they do. I'm going for Caulfield. We need that top line superstar winger. What do you say for a Caulfield trade? We trade Krejci, we bring up Chaplik, put Zaka. We keep Zaka where he is. We put Chaplik on the top line. Uh, or we put Zaka on the top line. And we have Krejci and Bufflin for Caulfield. What do you think? Um. What do you think, Paul? Paul? 
right. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking. Uh... I need answers now! I think if we, we should get another forward from them instead of a defenseman. <clears throat> I just don't know what. Why did they do that? Because it's Montreal, that's what they do. Oh, we have a trade alert in the bottom. They traded uh, Granulin, Rene, and Borowiecki to Buffalo for a second Ooh. and... For a second. Oh! And, and a prospect. Who do we play... Who do we have playing the... Oh, yeah, Gurianov. Mm. With Gurianov? No, no, I was I was thinking this on uh, the third line left wing. Oh. Uh, who do we have on the third line right? On the third line, um, on the fourth line right wing. Who do we have there? Yeah. Um. Uh, not a clue. Oh, oh, uh, oh, they traded Devin Levi and a third round pick and a fifth round pick and Adam Pilek. That's a trade. Holy, we're retaining all the salaries. Yeah, but their contracts are up in like a month. Yeah. Just to make it work with the cap. Yeah, I didn't think they'd go for that. <sighs> Let's go back to our field and no thing. Did they extend them? Nope. Let's Are they going to extend them in real life? Uh, I don't know. Nope. Don't think so? No. They like their prospects. Yeah, but I think if he buys in playing that third line role, possible. He's at least a second. If he takes third line role, then he's being very humble and taking a lot less money than what he could be getting. Well, no, he, he hasn't had a good start to the season. And last year, too, it wasn't. Edmonton traded Broberg. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right. There's no there's no trade for Bufflin because he's hurt and we launched this. Just garbage. <laughs> uh. Ooh, Isaac Radcliffe. Is he any good? I personally really like him. He could be useful. I don't think he's going to be top six, but he's going to be a useful player in the NHL. Now, I don't know I how think, useful he is on here. but I think uh, I'm going to go for Philly's uh, second and third in the Burge. 
Yeah. yeah. Best bang for your buck. Let the rebuild, or not rebuild, I guess. Just admitting we're not going to win anything this year. Begin. Uh, what do you think? Pittsburgh, second, third, and Nielsen? I... Can you retain money before you send the offer out, or? No. Damn. I don't think so. Yeah, no. Well, damn. So say, I wonder what the offer would be on that if you could retain money and then. There's a lot more interest in Eric Stahl. Yeah, there is. I like Foodie. I like Foodie a lot. Oh, and Baron. Oh, and Timmons. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Connor McMichael. Hmm. I want to go for Foodie. I know Foodie's gonna be is gonna be good. He's an elite player. He's a medium I'm, elite. I'm leaning toward Timmons, but it's all you. Well, Foodie's a centerman for Eric Stahl. Foodie's still in the uh, Quebec League, but he's a medium elite player. Okay. Gonna turn it. That's my that's my logic there. We've called up Jake Bean twice now. What? Oh, it's because when we traded um, Bufflin, it says we're calling up Jake Bean. David Krejci. Who's the team going making a cup run? Who's making a cup run right now? Oh. Uh, I don't know. Washington? See, Pittsburgh or Cap? Ottawa's apparently making a cup run. According to their trade block status. You know what? Let's do this. Oh, Nashville went and done it. They traded Kelly Yonkronk and Eric Howla. Horrible life decisions there by Nashville. There we go. Got a first round pick for David Gregory. How was that? Not bad. We just blew up our team, but whatever. Why are we interested in Frederick Anderson? It froze again. Third period of uh, the game on today's date. Um, just ended up. Brent Seabrook's going to the minors, and we don't want that contract. We don't want none of that. So, let's go ahead. We're going to be playing the Golden Knights again. Uh, yeah. And uh, we're just going to let the, uh, the head coach kind of determine the lines of the team for now. We're just going to adjust the rosters a bit, and then we're going to let the head coach do his thing. I mean, Joe Thornton's probably kind of salty that he got traded to a terrible team. Holy. 
Are you still there, Paul? Yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah, I was probably not too happy about that. Move Stanford back up with a uh, Bjorkstrand. Oh, never mind. That does nothing. Okay, so it was uh. Why is it being so shitty? No clue. No, no TSN. No. There we go. I like this, though. We have Chaplift in that second line. The young guy. Oh, he was lighting up the AHL, too. There we go. 23 year old. And he's check. Like that. <laughs> For the next episode, I'll switch to computer. Okay. So, yeah, this is, uh, how we're looking so far after the deadline all the crazy moves have, are done and now Quickly before we continue on, let's go change our captains up. Because we just traded away two of our captains, the three of them. Gave the captaincy to the rookie defenseman. Yeah, man. Horrible. The new, the new face of the franchise. Horrible. And Vegas up two zip after one period. Oh, we just tied it up. And the new acquisitions letting it up, proving his worth to the team. Jumbo Joseph Thornton. Here we go. Let's jump into the third period and see what happens. Who are you, who are you betting on? Uh, probably Vegas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It's a very fair <laughs> assessment. Nice smooth face off win by Joe Thornton. Ah, oh, good good little penalty draw there by Bear. Joe Thornton might just Carry this team to victory. Oh, as he. Well. 
of getting her done. Nick Colden yeah. tried to join in our celebration there. Yeah. And Joe Thornton, his first game with uh, in Saskatoon, scores a hat trick. So that's always nice. He's mad that Montreal traded him. I don't blame him. I feel like he's mad too that Montreal traded him and, and basically put him in there as a throw in. I like, I like Verona. I like him a lot. I think he was a good pickup. You want to talk about face of the franchise, Jacob Verona. Why? He's not that good. A... Oh, he will be. No, he won't. You get good enough players around him, he will be. Exactly. He needs players around him. I'm saying he work can be good by himself. There are very few players that don't need players around them to be great. Bosby. Exactly. And Heward is like a Crosby defenseman. Heward, in the scouting report, said he was going to be the next Bobby Orr. Well, that's just aggressive. It's what our scout said right before I fired him. I would have fired him too. Alright, here we go. Oliver Bjorkstrand taking the puck up ice. Bjorkstrand in, poke check by Martinez. Martinez passes to Tuck. Tuck is going in. And Jake Bean on the defense. Glass shoots and saved by Thatcher Demko. Yeah, Chaplick is carrying up Chaplick to Sanford. Sanford skating up ice. Sanford shoots and saved by Robin Leonard. And so far the score right now in the third period with 13.42 left in the third is 3-2 for Saskatoon. I hope Nachushkin gets a nice little one-timer there. I like Nachushkin. He's a good, he's a good sniper. He's a good mid-six player. Yeah, he's not great, but he's not terrible. No. Pavel Zaka. William Carrier. I like how you can hear the coach yelling change lines. <laughs> right. Oh. And shot the fan on it. Ryan Reeves passed to Yurko. Yurko shots, fans on it. Saved Ryan by Reeves, Demko. Ryan Reeves, the ultimate sniper. Yurko Reeves shoots, deflected by I follow. I follows in the corner with Reeves and Stevenson. Reeves again with the puck. Reeves passed to Yurko. Yurko shoots and saved by Demko. Shot by Reeves and rebound. And saved by Demko again. Pass it up to Guriano. Guriano brings it in the zone and checked on the zone. Nice play by I follow to break up that play. Mark Stone with the puck now. Mark Stone is checked in the corner by Alcon. I follow as the puck. I follow looking for his man. I follow passing that to Achari. Achari is poke checked by who is 14? Schmidt? No. Uh, I'm not sure. Schmidt doesn't play for them anymore. I know. I just, I just realized that after I said it. Uh, Whatever. it would be... Whatever, I'm a homer. I work for Saskatoon. I think... Nick... No, not Nick Smoltz. No, it got... It's not even what I meant. I meant Nick Holden. 
it's not him, I don't think. Mark Stone passed to Carlson. Carlson in the zone. He's, he's brought down in the corner by Matthias Eckhold up into Ethan Bear. Ethan Bear has a puck. Perry then dumps it in, but it goes off the, off the player and into the board back onto the ice. So we'll have a face-off coming up now. And again, we'd like to remind our listeners that this episode is brought to you by Hell's Haven Board of Collie Rescue. Again, we'll leave the, the email address to donate in the description. But please do donate to Hall's Haven Border Collie Rescue. And remember, all money that goes towards them is given for the dogs. It gives them dog food, vet bills, and dog care. Do it for the dogs, if not for the humans. Because, you know, all dogs go to heaven and dogs are awesome. We love dogs in this podcast. And this YouTube channel. Yes. Isn't... Very much so. And back to the game. Jakob Vranas passes to Foley to Foley, saved by Robin Leonard. Uh, Cody Glass now has the puck. Cody Glass getting up ice. Checked on the D zone by Ethan Bear. Pacioretty to Shea Theodore. Theodore Pacioretty shot and missed the net on the back end. Ethan Bear skating up ice now. Ethan Bear. Nice little move by there. Pass to Foley to Foley skating up ice. Foley shoots empty net and scores. Tyler to Foley. Woohoo! The Vegas fans are not pleased by this. That is his 19th goal of the season, ladies and gentlemen. On the empty net goal, Tyler to Foley is your Saskatoon. Game winning, game winner, he's the most player of the game. We'll call him the, the Border Collie Rescue guy. <laughs> All right, with 33.3 seconds left in the third period, the second line's out. Chaplick, Bjorkstrand, and Zach Sanford. Zach Smith now with the puck. Smith. Sorry, Riley Smith. Shot. Missed in that shot. Saved by Demko. They're making a push for it. They try to make something. Peter Angelo can't get it. Sanford has the puck now. Sanford going up by Sanford. Shoots in the internet. Scores! Zach Sanford. And that, my four ends, is the last nail in the coffin. From being a looked over prospect in Washington, winning a cup with St. Louis, now in the middle of farmland. But he's playing on the top line. And Saskatoon isn't very farmland. Farmland is more down south, in like Regina, uh, Moose Jaw area. Saskatoon's more, you know, forest and flat in the, in the boreal forest in the, in the Canadian Shield area. For those of you that think Saskatoon's all prairies. Yes, we, we don't do stereotypes here. Well, no, I just, I just happen to be prairies. <laughs> oh, what a save by Robin Leonard. That Not all nice... hockey players are toothless, everybody. That was a good win by your Saskatoon Mustangs. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this episode. Here's a little bit of highlight package from tonight's game. In the third period, we have Tyler to fully snipe him at the empty net goal there. And then we have Zach Sanford also getting his empty net goal here from outside the offensive zone. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And again, we'd like to remind you that this episode is brought to you by... Pulse, Haven, Barter, Polly, Rescue. Uh, they're great friends of ours and donate to them. Please, please, please donate. Every, every cent does go to the dogs and it does help the dogs. Every little penny counts, every dollar counts. So please continue to do donate. We appreciate that. We all hope you have a great week and stay safe out there, folks. Thank you for watching.